So um, I'm known to break tradition, so here I am already. I can stand. This is normal for me. Um, yeah, that's right. I break tradition all the time. Um, so you're sitting in a room, looking over your youth, and you have a Catholic, a Lutheran, a Methodist, a Covenant, a couple atheists, um, a couple kids that are really not quite sure why they're even here. And to take it even further, we go into the fact that Catholic kids are only here for dinner because they have to go to CCD at 7, that's like about 6.30, so typically they're coming and eating all your food. And then you have the Lutheran kids where you actually need to go check the schedule of the Lutheran youth group to make sure that they're not supposed to be there right now so you don't have to yell at them and say, no, you have to leave and go to your youth group because it's your week. Sounds a little crazy? This is my normal, like every week. Um, we kicked off our year just a couple weeks ago. Um, 36 kids showed up. It was insane. You're thinking, well, that's really not that high. Um, I live in a small town um, in the high school, junior high, high school, 7th and 12th grade. It's 150 kids. So I ordered a lot of pizza, and thankfully we had enough. That was what it was like the first night. But the crazy thing about 36 kids is four years ago, we ended our first year with six. Six kids. Um, leading this group, the last four years, which just started my fifth year, um, it has been nothing but an adventure. Now, I'm a volunteer. I don't get paid. Um, I'm one of these crazy people that does it because I'm crazy. And um, if, you, if you think of chaos, and I saw out here that's the name of the junior high ministry, chaos for us is beautiful. If I think of the word, and if it can be beautiful, it's this group. Um, it started four year, five years ago, before me, when four completely separate churches came together. And when I say completely separate, let me explain. Methodist, Covenant, Christian, and Courts of Praise. Courts of Praise, you're like, what? It's Pentecostal. So, four very, very different. There's a lot of what going on, maybe. I don't say that word. But um, four completely different churches came together to start a children's ministry. They wanted to figure out, in a small town community, how could we do this? And so they started Awana. Um, I came in after the first year. I got invited to a meeting. They told me about this group nobody wanted. I'm thinking kindergartners. Then they said junior high. I laughed. It was quite a surreal scene. Um, the, the amazing thing about it is I was thinking to myself, I had been in youth ministry in Kansas City before we moved back home, where I was one of the sponsors, helpers, whatever. And we had one pastor. One deacon of the board, one congregation. And now I'm in a situation with four pastors, four deacon of the boards, and uh, a lot of congregations, four, but a lot of old people with traditions. Don't get me wrong, but if you know what I mean, you probably should say amen. <laughs> um, it was nuts to be in this situation. I'm thinking, okay, they'll give me direction. Uh, yeah, no. That's kind of on my own. Um, thankfully, my pastor of our church, he would kind of lead me along, but he was never really that mean because he felt like there's four people involved. He can't just tell me what to do. And so I've kind of just journeyed on this adventure by myself. Um, frustrated my first year. I, I was so frustrated because I'm in my hometown. I know most of the people, and I couldn't get these kids to come through to save my life. I tried everything, you know, tell the other kids, hey, bring a friend, I'll give you a candy bar. Yeah, does that work? Seriously, does anybody in this room have luck with that? Because I never had that luck, at least not that first year. And so I decided that, well, my problem was, because these kids have no clue who I am. So I have to get on their level. It has to happen. So I applied for a librarian position at the school. Laugh, because I'm an artist. An artist in a library, funny. So, um, I, I take this part-time job, and I did it because I can meet these kids. And if you're in the library, you will know the kids that get in trouble go to the library. And so, you have a lot of those kids. And I was able to interact with these kids on a totally different level. Get to know them, give them a hard time. Yes, I actually kind of do know that. No, I don't know algebra, but we can go figure that out. And my relationship with these kids, these off kids started to just boom. And so in our youth group, um, on this last week, uh, we had 32 kids come. Um, yes, so a couple were missing. The 32 kids showed up, and I could look over the group, and seven of my kids have a church home. Families go to church. Sometimes they go to church. 
Um, but at 25 kids sitting there, most of them have no church home. They don't have a Bible in their church. And this is a small town in Kansas. So it's a little odd. Anyway, what I realized is that what is getting you people here? Like literally, I had this kid, Joseph, this week, and I'm thinking, how are you here? I mean, really? You're here? And it was amazing. And yet I was like, what? And so I this kid, and I'm thinking about what is happening that's making this work. There's three things. Pursue, challenge, and love. Each night when we get together, we eat dinner. My cook's here. She's amazing. I'm so thankful for her. And um, we sit down over it, and it used to be like I'm looking over you. And I'm saying, okay, uh, where's Joey? Oh, Joey's not here? Okay, he was sick. Okay, where's Abby? Oh, she was in the alley with her boyfriend. <laughs> awesome. Somebody call her now. Um, I do this. I check in. I get my kids. I make a mental check of where my kids are. And the kids will joke. It's this joke now. They'll say, do not give Jenny a reason to hunt you down. And it's so true because I will so hunt them down. The following day, I was subbing in science, which is another whole funny thing because me and science are not friends. And I'm there, and in walk two girls that had missed the night before, and they walk in, and I'm just like, hey, awesome, so happy to see you too. And they go on to say that, oh, no, no, Mrs. Pope, we're so happy that you're here subbing, but now we have to explain why we were in a youth group last night. Yeah, you're not going to have to do that, aren't you? And so we have a conversation. And they go on to say that, hey, you know, we had algebra telling us we don't know what to do, so we stayed home to study. Before I could even finish, there was another girl in the room that goes to me and she said, oh, you've never not been in the youth group because of homework. And I'm thinking, oh, it's true. Because in our youth group, I'm mad that the teachers do homework on Wednesday nights. In my hometown, Wednesday nights are still a church night. It is still diehard serious. I can raise, I can raise hell if the football team goes late. And I do, believe me. So, <laughs> probably not surprised already. Um, so then she goes on to say that when you come to youth group, I've gone to the principal's office and explained to the principal that, hey, Wednesday nights are my night. So if they come in with 30 math problems, it's a group project, period. I don't care, tell me no, oh, sorry. So they'll come in and what's so neat about it is I have leaders that are amazing helpers. And so they'll go around and we'll have the math table and the science table, and then I might help out with the creative table, maybe. Um, other than that, I kind of avoid the rest. But it's created an environment these kids come in and they know this is what they can have. It's so much fun to be doing it because it's, I'm constantly pursuing these kids. I can tell you stories about me walking into the high school because I hear that a kid had said something or was upset about something. I can go into the office. Now, remember, I grew up in this hometown. I'm, you know, I'm on the senior wall. I actually graduated from here. And I can say, I need to talk to this kid. And they'll say, okay, work. Can I go get him out of class? Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. I can walk down the hall, knock on the door. I usually don't interrupt certain classes. I know the teachers because they were my teachers. So you just know not to go there. But I can open the door and I can pull a kid out of class. And I can say, hey, what's up? And I can have a conversation with them. I do it all the time. I'm always in the school pursuing, going to their rest, going to wherever they're working. And I'm trying to reach these kids, figure out, why aren't you coming? What upset you this week? You know, how can I challenge you? And the reason why I say challenge is because the more I pursue them, the more I can challenge them. I have a kid, um, Joey. He, he's, off, he's on and off. He's been there since the last couple of years. He always says that uh, he, he struggles with youth group because a lot of the kids there really aren't Christians and they're not doing good things, which is really funny because Joey's one of those kids. So I'm thinking, okay, well, that makes a lot of sense. And I have stopped Joey, like literally walked out the street and stopped his car to have a conversation with him before about, why aren't you coming to the group? I need you to be You need to be there. And we'll have this batter back and forth in the middle of the street as cars are passing on both sides. Love small towns. So um, the thing about Joey was this summer his dad came to me and said, hey, Joey got a second MIP. And, you know, he just wanted me to know. So actually later that day I'm at the pool hanging out with my kids. It's one of the nice things about being a volunteer, stay-at-home mom, whatever other business I can come up with in my home. And I'm sitting there and Joey starts talking to me and so we're having this conversation back and forth about our summer. I'm so excited about the year. I can't begin to explain the next school year what's going to happen. And 
Joey, you know, I start challenging Joey about, hey, you know, I need you there this year. I need you. I need you to be a leader. And he didn't know that I already knew. And he gets so sad. And he looks at me with tears in his eyes. And this is a, this is a wrestler. He's a tough kid, Boy Scout, all that stuff. And with tears in his eyes, he says, I screwed up again. I can't be a leader. So he went on to tell me about what had happened. And the conversation ended with two things. Jesus used a lot of screw-ups to change the world. And I need you to be a leader. And I know that a lot of you are out there like, really? A kid with two MIPs making a lot of tough decisions being your leader? Yeah, because I can see it in him. And God is showing me that in him. And I'm going to challenge him like crazy. And yes, he drives me nuts on a Wednesday night. Most of them do. But I want Joey there. When you take time to pursue them, you take time to challenge them, you start to get to love them. I have a, another girl, Tina, she just graduated. Tina broke every boundary that you have. Like, I have a boundary. She broke it every night to the, the extreme. She was a rough kid. We went back and forth, back and forth. She, she tempted, she considered suicide multiple times. She considered running away. She, I've had to break up fights between her and mom. It was just this constant chaos with her. Um, her freshman year, she had been in and out of the home a lot with me, just talking to me and my husband. My husband helps me with youth. And I was just, I was so tired. I was like, I don't know what to do with this girl anymore. I don't know what to do. And my husband said, well, can I send her a message on Facebook? Who got a red flag? Husband sending a girl Facebook message? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, I said, go for it. I'm all over it. Her dad's in jail. I don't care anymore to the point where I need help. So he sent her this message. I really don't even know what it said. Bad leader. But... Um, sent it, and she never responded. Never. It was a freshman year. For senior year, we got this thank you card. I just want to read from it. Um, I will never be able to thank you enough, ever. I know I'll never forget you or your husband. My freshman year, Albert mess messaged me on Facebook, on Facebook telling me I was loved, that I will never be alone. It killed me to think I was loved. He knows when something is wrong, even if I don't tell him. You two will always and forever be a special place in my heart. When she says him, she's meeting Jesus. I can wish that I have no clue where Tina is in her faith. I have no idea. Seriously, I don't. Joe kids right now, she tells me she's going to strip at college. I told her I will come and kick her. I'm going to say it. Ask if she does. <laughs> and I will. I mean, I really will. Uh, but in her whole four years with us, if she learned two things, that we love her and that God loves her, then that's enough for me. Um, I, I'm extreme with my youth. I, I know some of you are thinking, you are nuts. I am nuts. I'm bold. I'm blunt. God made me this way. He, he's, I don't know why. He just did. And I'm the same way with my parents and I'm the same way with the other churches. I mentioned a Lutheran and a Catholic in earlier. I reach out to these other youth groups. They're good friends of mine. We hang out. And I'm like, why do you put up these walls? Why aren't we doing youth ministry together? I mean, yeah, I get it. You guys do wine. Okay, that's awesome. I'd like to visit. I'm going to personally be okay with not worrying about my baby baptism. Okay, well, you know, it's not, I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about Jesus. And we need to be with Jesus. And so we are breaking walls in a very small town. Of tradition for the Catholics and the Lutherans. I swear, if there was ever going to be a fight between them, it would not be pretty because I don't know who owns more guns. So it's just, it's just one of those scenarios. Dead serious. Dead serious. Look up the statistics on that. It's scary. Um, but we're breaking down these walls, and that's what's really cool. And I know I'm going over time. Um, I'm just going to pull that. I've never done this before, Carl. So, one last thing. Right now in downtown Denver, my cousin is in ICU. He's like a little brother. And they have two cousins on that side of the family, grown up with him, and he's literally fighting for his life. He's been in there for a couple weeks. And during this time, you've seen a community come together, above and beyond. I, I was worried about his lawn, it's already mowed. I worried about their garden taken care of. I worried about the dog, it's at the vet. The vet came and got it, took it home. I'm worried about the little boys, who's picking them up from school, and there's neighbors picking them up, and all this stuff is going on. Yesterday, I sat in the hospital, and they put on Facebook to call and leave a positive message on his phone so that they could play it to him so he could hear it so his spirits will start to lift and he'll start to fight it. It's amazing. That phone went off constantly. It was nuts. 
So my question is, what if we started to teach, treat our youth like they are in the ICU? What if we made it a point to pursue, challenge, love, go above and beyond any logic, and reach out to them? And that's my challenge. I, and to me and to you is to, to not just invite kids to youth group, but to actually pursue them. And see where it takes you. Thanks. Thank you.